Welcome to the first session of the, uh, today's workshop. Uh, the workshop is about uh, Hangul processing. Uh, the first presentation of the uh, session will give you a brief overview of uh, what, what is involved in uh, Hangul processing. And then we'll have Mr. Andehok uh, talk about Hangul input and output um, related to uh, personal computers and on. And then uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Yang Wang Song uh, talk about the most popular uh, Korean word processor, Arya Hangul, and how it came to be and uh, what made it so successful. And finally, we'll have uh, Professor uh, Im Sun Bum uh, present, uh, share his experience uh, as an early pioneer in uh, Hangul font, font uh, development. Before I give you uh, an overview of Hangul processing, I just like to remind you that this is the continuation of a, a session uh, that was part of last year's workshop. In the last year's workshop on Hangul I.O., uh, there was a presentation on Hangul printer development in the uh, 1970s and 1980s, followed by Hangul computer terminal development of uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, in those days, before the advent of personal computers, people had to use uh, mainframe and mini computer, which were connected to a terminal. And, and that, this uh, presentation talked about you know, how uh, Korean input was supported on those terminals. The uh, final presentation of uh, last year's uh, session was on Hangul and Hanja word process de uh, development. And today, we'll have uh, uh, more about uh, the Hangul word processor development. And what is Hangul processing? I like to define Hangul processing as a using a machine to input and output Hangul. Hangul, as you know, is a phonetic script composed of 24 letters. And, and this is actually you know, far fewer than the number of letters in, in an English alphabet. Then you may think that you know, creating a Hangul typewriter should be a straightforward, should be an easy work. But it turns out that, you know, it wasn't really that easy. This is a, uh, a photo of uh, uh, circa 1960 Hangul mechanical typewriter. This was very popular at the time. You know how long it took to develop, to make a typewriter like this? Uh, a popular uh, use in uh, office settings. The very first uh, known case of a Korean or Hangul uh, typewriter was created in uh, 1913 by uh, Lee Wan-ik. He actually uh, took an English typewriter and simply replaced the typeface on the print head of the English typewriter with uh, Korean alphabetic letters. And it, it actually produced uh, Korean text only uh, it was actually rotated you know, 90 degrees. So the user had to take out the page and had to turn it you know, 90 degrees and read the text from top to bottom. And this really didn't uh, take off. It actually took more than 40 years to become uh, a popular a tool in the office setting. It was only in the you know, late 50s and the 60s that mechanical typewriter uh, became a, a commonplace. Why is that the case? Why did it take so long? The reason is that Hangul is unique in that, as I said, it is an alphabet, but it also has characteristics of a syllabary like uh, Japanese kana or Egyptian hieroglyphics, where a symbol stands for a syllable instead of an alphabetic letter. This dual characteristics of Hangul made creation of mechanical Hangul typewriter a difficult process. Let's take a look at uh, what constitutes a Hangul syllable. Hangul syllable, at the minimum, consists of a consonant and a vowel. And sometimes, it may have an optional final consonant so this is an example of uh, uh, actual Hangul syllables. On the left-hand side, you're actually uh, looking at uh, words Hangul, 
consisting of two syllables. And even for a non-Korean speaker, even if you don't understand Korean, you could actually tell this word consists of two syllables. The syllable boundaries are uh, very clear because they form a visual whole. And unlike in English, and often even a, an experienced English speaker may have to resort to a hyphenation dictionary to find where one syllable ends and the new syllable begins. We don't have that problem in uh, Hangul. In order to create a, a practical uh, Hangul typewriter that will be uh, accepted by the, uh, the public, the early the inventors of uh, Korean typewriters had to mimic traditional character, uh, character form. In order to, uh, to mimic that, individual letter shape and placement of the letters had to be adjusted depending on the syllable context. Let me explain with an example. So you're looking at two syllables here. And I circled in red the letter Giyok, which corresponds to letter K in, in English alphabet. As you can see, even though they are same letters, they actually appear slightly differently. Their positions are different, and their shapes are a little bit different. So in order to do, in order to handle these kind of variations, at the minimum, the Korean typewriter had to have two sets of consonant typefaces in addition to a set of uh, vowel type typeface. And the typist then had to manually select which of two consonant typefaces to use. It may sound actually not all that complicated. However, you know, the problem gets more, even more complicated if you look at other examples. So we have now seven Hangul syllables. And all these syllables contain letter gyo. And I circled them in red. And as you can see, actually, they the shapes are you know, slightly different in every single case, and their positions are different. Similarly with vowels, I'm showing the letter A uh, corresponding to uh, letter A in English, English alphabet. Depending on the context, the position changes, and the length of the vowel uh, also changes. This is an example of a vowel a horizontal vowel U. Again, their position changes and shape and the length changes. So in order to represent these variations, the typist had to use multiple shift keys to correct the uh, correct instance of a, a letter depending on the context. And this obviously slowed down the, uh, the typing and also made uh, learning how to type uh, a difficult process. And then computers came. In 1978, Choi Gang Mu showed that computer can be used to automatically demarcate syllable boundaries based on simple rule. The rule was no syllable can start without a consonant preceding a vowel. In other words, you can have a syllable starting with a vowel. And this is different from English. You, we have English words, English syllables, starting with vowels like A, I, and O. But in, in Korean, we don't allow that. It has to start with a consonant. Let me give you an example of uh, Korean uh, Hangul text input stream. So the user here entered the consonant and then followed by a vowel. When the computer sees that vowel, it places that vowel on the right-hand side of the consonant, thus forming a minimum syllable. And then, if the user, the typist, enters another consonant, then computer temporarily places that consonant underneath the initial consonant and vowel cluster. So this is also a legitimate uh, syllable. But you cannot tell whether this syllable is actually, uh, syllable formation is complete or not until the next input is entered. If the next input is a vowel, then the computer, since 
As I said, in, uh, the rule dictates that no syllable cannot start with a vowel. It then actually takes that consonant that was the part of the initial syllable and creates a new instance of a syllable. So you, we now have a syllable that has consonant vowel and consonant vowel uh, combination, two syllables. If on the other hand, the, the input after the you know, consonant vowel uh, consonant uh, cluster is formed is another consonant, then computer can, with confidence, know that uh, initial syllable has been completed. So it starts a new syllable with the just tentered uh, consonant. Once syllable boundaries are determined, computer can also select the correct shape and position of a letter within a syllable block. So let's go back to that you know, consonant vowel cons uh, consonant example. If the, the next input is a vowel, but of a horizontal type instead of the vertical type we saw before, then it actually shortens the, the consonant of that uh, cluster that the horizontal vowel is, uh, is part of. And then it places that vowel underneath uh, that consonant. So it, it, the computer performs this kind of you know, uh, transformation. This discovery of automatic syllable demarcation algorithm studied whole new industry around computer-based Hangul processing solutions, such as word processor, desktop publishing, fonts, and etc. cetera. It, um, there was so much interest in using uh, personal computer to do this kind of work. In uh, 1980s and 1990s, there were actually more than 20 indigenously developed Korean word processors buying for market share. So this is only a partial list. And, and this is a list actually compiled uh, by, uh, in this presentation in last year's workshop. And uh, four of uh, the word process on this list is actually my own creation. Uh, this proliferation of PCs in uh, 19, 1980s did not really have the same impact on software industries in Japan uh, Taiwan and China, where China, uh, you know, these were countries, probably not China, but Japan and Taiwan, they had at a similar level, uh, uh, the personal computer's popularity were at a similar level, if not more, uh, than uh, Korea. But it didn't really have, uh, it didn't really galvanize uh, software developers to develop Japanese or Chinese processing uh, software. The reason is that uh, in order to handle Chinese characters, there are so many characters. You first had to use, in case of uh, uh, Japan, uh, uh, kanji keyboard or romaji keyboard, so phonetic keyboard. Then you have to substitute that uh, phonetically input uh, Japanese characters into uh, kanji, the Chinese characters. But since there were so many homonyms, the words that sounded the same, but uh, were rep represented by uh, different Chinese characters, you actually required a large lookup dictionary. And in order to streamline the uh, selection process, you actually had to have a very sophisticated uh, context uh, analyzing uh, module. And this was actually beyond uh, the capability of uh, the personal computers of uh, 1980s. Fortunately for Koreans, this automatic uh, syllable demarcation algorithm was sufficiently difficult to attract software developers to challenge and uh, they were uh, inspired by this issue. But it wasn't too difficult to be solved on the limited computing resources that was uh, uh, available to them. So you know, a lot of people went into this field and many of them gained their experience and they have uh, branched out into uh, early you know, uh, computer, early internet industries, and uh, game in, they became leaders of uh, these uh, internet and uh, game industries. Now, we'll hear more about uh, what was involved in this uh, Hangul uh, processing. Thank you.